Shot clock is off. Warriors down three. Curry double team. Jordan Poole lets it fly. Oh, no. Oh, no. That is not the shot no. at that it's moment. Horrible shot. No. Guys, just get a shot up. I mean, if you dribble out of the oh, Cavs no. logo. Oh, no. I mean, it's what an offensive do? foul. Attacks the closeout, misses the runner. DiVincenzo, what a play! Pool in and out on that offensive rebound. He was yelling at Jordan Poole to pass him the ball, and Jordan shot it with 12 seconds or whatever. Done. Seven seconds to go. Here's Poole. They double him. He takes a half court shot geez. with four seconds to go. Someone said about Victor Wambanyama that whenever you watch him play, you just don't know what will he do next. Well, the same thing could be applied to Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma. Obviously not in a good way. The amount of boneheaded plays and memes that these two already created for us in five regular season games is truly astonishing. The funniest thing is how the Washington Wizards fanbase are forced to embrace the type of basketball being played. Personally, I watched all Wizards games including the preseason, but to better understand the current issues with Jordan Poole, we need to bring briefly talk about the Golden State Warriors. In the last three years, the Golden State Warriors finished bottom five in turnovers per game. Last season, only the Houston Rockets were behind the dubs. And there was one usual suspect in his in-game decision-making specifically in clutch, that stood out. So get this, in the last five minutes of a game where the lead was plus or minus five points, in 119 minutes, Poole committed 12 turnovers. And well, the pattern that we see with Jordan Poole is that whenever the game itches down to the wire, the more Jordan is prone on making stupid mistakes. And if you watched any games, the case is not because of Warriors up tempo threading the needle offensive system. The turnovers that Jordan committed last year was either from traveling, slipping, or simply bouncing the ball off of his leg. And we're not even counting the amounts of questionable shot selection and moments where Jordan Poole enabled his tunnel vision with only seeing himself in the basket. So without any surprise, on a team that greenlights his every look, Jordan Poole already had some ridiculous games with awful stat lines. But numbers are numbers, I will show you how is it a struggle to be the main guy for a young Wizards team and why is it dangerous for Jordan Poole to be playing how he's playing currently. Jordan Poole's game against the Toronto Raptors. Good ball movement, the defense is scrambling, Jordan goes to the rim and what do you think he's going to do? I think you already have an idea what JP is going to do, but here's some much needed context to let you, the viewer, understand how detrimental can Jordan be in certain stretches of the game. Before this exact play, Jordan Poole went 0 of 5 from the field and that's one of the roughest game starts you'll ever see. I mean, the guy was missing everything, of course the defense was strangling Jordan on every situation and we'll talk about that later, but with every drive to the basket, Jordan was met by multiple defenders. Also, he was guarded by OG Anunobi, who is an excellent physical defensive player, and Poole obviously tried shooting his way out of the slump. So let's go back to that specific play. So Poole is 0 of 5 from the field, he drives, draws the weak side help, meanwhile Schroeder is left to defend two best wizards long range shooters. You have Corey Kispert who shoots 48% from that exact right corner spot and Mike Muscala who shoots 38% and only Dennis Schroeder is responsible for both of them. You have your best team shooters in the same area at the same time and Jordan fails to read such a simple play. All that ball movement that happened before and Jordan's penetration to the basket is worthless. And this happens a lot, the whole team including GP working on defense or offense just for Jordan to somehow blunder the final moment of the position. And that's the thing, Jordan Poole no longer has Clay Thompson or Steph Curry or a system where he can highly benefit offensively from opponents' defenses emphasizing moderate dimension players. On this Washington's team, Jordan Poole is the main scouting report for the opponents. Defenders will get physical with Jordan. So he has to figure out how to contribute to team success when his shots are not falling and most importantly, Jordan has to read what defenses are offering him. Talking about Jordan's shot selection, I don't think that there's a bad shot for him, what surprises me the most is how he managed to play with both Steph and Clay and didn't learn the importance of relocation and passing over an average look to get a better look. This play right here really embodies Jordan Poole, so the Washington Wizards play perfect defense for the whole possession, Grizzlies best defender Jaron Jackson Jr. is on the floor, you have transition offense 4 against 5 and Poole attempts a contested 3 point shot and then has a Nick Young moment. The funny thing is how Washington's players already knew what's going to happen as they stopped after Jordan received the ball. Also NBA fans saying that Jordan Poole is entitled to some shots because he's completely hot, well the game 
continuing as the New York Knicks where Jordan went off for 41 points also had some head scratching moments. So GP goes to the bench at the very end of the first period and Mike Muscala takes over. Three long range jump shots not even hitting the rim, all clean looks that do the scorching hot. He begins the second period leading that bench squad in scoring and when Jordan Poole comes in again, Mike Muscala didn't touch the ball for three straight minutes before he was taken out of the game. Simply put, Jordan Poole failed to recognize and feed the hot hand. And again, at this moment Jordan had 7 points while Muscala closed out the opening period making every single shot he attempted. So my question to the casual NBA fans, how can you justify Jordan's ball hawk tendencies when he's making some shots while he's ignoring open teammates? And we all know that if JP would have missed those shots, nothing would change. And I wouldn't say that Jordan Poole is a bad passer or that he doesn't have a great vision. I'm especially impressed by how he remains patient whenever he drives to the lanes and considering his size and the crowd how well JP manages to precisely get rid of the ball. With the games I've seen, Poole doesn't strike me as a player that has absolutely no playmaking skills. He can throw the outlet pass, his passes has a nice trajectory, he can push the tempo. But the problem is that Poole is inconsistent as hell and I'm not even talking about game to game, I'm talking about possession to possession. As I mentioned before, you just don't know what will he do next. I've noticed that team scouted his weakness of panicking under a double team pressure. Good proportion of JP's turnovers comes from dribbling himself into double teams. Jordan doesn't react well to double teams late in the shot clock. This is where JP has poor awareness as he just gets stuck and can't get rid of the ball. It feels like Jordan Poole has this mode of hunting for easy buckets and this mode gets enabled in stretches that you shouldn't lose your focus. In this play, Jordan strips the ball from Brown, goes on a semi-transition to do this, when his team was struggling to get on the board and were down by 15 points in the first period. Jordan Poole as talented as he is, he's one of those players that needs a strict coaching hand. If you greenlight his every look, the guy loses his mind and becomes pure chaos on the court. Sometimes I fail to understand what Jordan Poole is exactly thinking. In this play, he tries posting up Drew Holiday, a player that is used to defending centers in the post. Then you can see Danny Avdia cutting and actually being in the paint wide open. It's just, I don't know, it seems that Jordan Poole is way over confident with his abilities. Thank you for the aerial display. All, all Jordan Poole can do is look at the ref. Because you know when you hit holidays, like hitting the wall? Now, as we discussed, whenever JP struggles to score, he can't contribute offensively at all. To make things worse, his defense is lackadaisical. He doesn't have the motor to play good defense, nor the body, nor the size. Tatum goes to work on Poole. Good luck, Jordan Poole. So here's the issue in my opinion, you can be a below average defender or even a glaring hole on defense as long as you manage to effectively contribute on the offensive end. Trey Young is a really bad defender, but he's an offensive triple threat that has a quick long range release, a complete package of moves, quick first step and he can distribute the ball. Obviously Young, just like majority of smaller guards, gets exposed a lot defensively, but you can't argue with his influence on team's offense without him, it doesn't exist. And you can't really replace Trae Young with any young lottery pick that could be a floor general right away from college. As it's always a struggle to translate your game from college or Europe to NBA, it takes time, but with players like Jordan Poole who plays as a secondary ball handler and needs a lot of looks to be effective, I do have a feeling that he could be easily replaced by a younger version of himself that has more potential. It happened thousands of times in NBA, the organizations replacing a decaying and efficient scorers with someone that they believe has more potential to lead a team. Obviously it's not happening for Jordan anytime soon because the Washington Wizards are tanking and both Kyle and Jordan is a perfect duo to lead the tank mode, but it's such a dangerous route to go. John Wall explained it perfectly that players shouldn't get adjusted to losing. The type of basketball that these two are playing wouldn't cut in any of the winning teams and Jordan going to the Wizards and doing that same type of shit that got him traded from Golden State is kinda ridiculous. The recent victim of this would be Jalen Novell. I was surprised seeing rumors of him maybe playing in some European teams. I was caught off guard because I didn't realize that he's out of the league. Whenever I watched Timberwolves games, the guy was a walking bucket off the bench and after doing some research, it was clear that Jalen contributed virtually Virtually nothing in any other category than scoring. And even when it came to putting the ball into the basket, he was not efficient. It will be interesting to see how much can Jordan Poole change going forward. He's shown that he's capable to play winning basketball and in my opinion, it's fully up to JP to adapt his game. 